Philly Frank. Like you said, man, you from Area Avenue, North Philly originally. Know what I mean? Right. You right now, yeah. you calling from SCI Forest. How long you been locked down up to this point? We 2018 going into 2019. Right now, I got eight in. Well, Jan, like January the 25th will be eight on the dot. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. All right. I so- have the eight and I got eight, eight more. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, so before, so you say you got eight more to do? Yeah, I got eight more. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so before we get to that part of the story, I want to start at the very, right. very, very beginning. Like, so you grew up in Area Avenue, know what I mean? North Philly section of, yeah. uh, of Philadelphia. So what, right. what was your upbringing like? Explain, like, your family life and what the environment yeah. you grew up in. Give them that rundown. Well, you know, it was... You know, as far as growing up, you know, my pop left when I was around, I was around five years old. You know, I grew up kind of like in a military background. My pop was in the Army, and my mom was a teacher. You know, she went to Bethlehem. She worked at Bethlehem. That's an elementary school. This you know, is a program. Uh, Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution. Forest. This call is subject to reporting and monitoring. Yeah, so, you know, from there, you know, once my pop left, I kind of, like, started looking at the streets like, that's what it was, and then seeing seeing the whole the niggas on the corner, them doing them, you know, I'm hot. And man, you had always Skeeter and them, um, you had them type of always that was getting some paper. So you know, me watching that as a young age, I mean, around like ten or eleven, you know, I started trying to imitate them. Even my bro, you know, my bro running around doing them, um, he looking good. You know, as a young boy, I wanted to look good. So, you know, I kind of stepped into the streets from there. You know, uh. I ended up catching my first case prior when I was around like 12 or 13. So, uh, from there it was just, you know, just, I mean, from there it was just in the streets. Like, it was just, it was shining out from there. You know, before I got killed back in 2005, you know, that was kind of like, I mean, the neighborhood of Aero. Everybody looking up to a lot of niggas said, I always wanted that. And seeing what he had, seeing the love, and mainly it was a lot of fear. I mean, once you realize that one when broke past, I mean, you realize you know, the love wasn't really love. You know, and really? So, yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I want to pause you right there for a second because you definitely spoke on something I want you to elaborate on a little bit. Because you spoke right. on our mind, like, I mean, he definitely from, from if you're from Area Avenue, you definitely know who that is. And outside of the city, some people know too, but he definitely was a legendary street boy. And you basically said you, and you basically said you saw the type of respect and the fear people had from him. And you kind of wanted right. to imitate that. And you kind of wanted to take on that type of persona. This is a call from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution. Forrest, this call is subject to reporting and monitoring. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Like, he was he was live. And he was official. You know, even not not only him, you know, we had Doc. I mean, Free Doc. Free Knock. And, man, he was official boys, man. You know, I grew up at the time. I grew up under highs. He, you know, he was, you know what I mean, some wild niggas, too. So, you know, we kind of... Had our own little circle, and we was doing us. You know, it was, it was a lot of love, man. It was a lot of love. Right, you know, right, once right. I wanted to die, people had to step up. We had to step up. Right, right, right. And I remember you, you know what I mean, y'all jumping out there when y'all was young boys and y'all was active, running around in the streets and all that. And I mean, and at some point in time, you know, Fidel had got killed. Now, I mean, that was right. one of the joints that kind of hurt the hood. And I know y'all was real yeah. close, so speak on how that situation yeah. affected you, because that definitely was your man. You know, everybody fucked yeah, with Fidel. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, that was my right hand, man. I ain't never meet another nigga like him, man. That was real. You know, when Dallas got killed, man, that shit, like, I wasn't the same person no more, you feel me? So it was just, you know, uh, you know how it happened, man. It wasn't really supposed to happen. It was just, it just happened that day, like, it wasn't. 
it's just it was just on a spare moment type of thing, man. It happened, you know, bro died. Man, a lot of people was trying to throw, throw me under the bus, try to say I set him up, try to say I killed him. A lot of people was trying to go dirt on my name, you know, but niggas that really was, you know, around really knew what was really going on and what was what. And man, all my life I've been a loyal nigga. I mean, I died for my niggas. So at the end of the day, I wasn't really sweating that. You know, I was on point. So, you know, but yeah, man, when Bell died, it kind of shook the hood, man, because had a lot of love, man. You know, that was bro, man. Everybody loved up. All right, all right. No, definitely, man. So moving forward past that, you know, it was some time between that and when you actually got locked up for the situation you in now. So what was your life like? What was your experiences like prior to that? Like, what was what was you doing? What was going on with you up until the point where you got locked up? All right. You know, back in 07, and then this right after, you know, Dell got killed those seven. So I was kind of like, I wasn't in the right state of mind. So I was just running around. I was on the run for some drama, but I wound up getting locked up when I was 16. I threw two years over pick on the juvenile block, kind of went to the adult block for attempted murder. I beat it, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, when I came home, you know, VSF was popping out at the time, you know, Rich Rolo. I mean, crack me, bro, everybody, I and mean, they going out, young day. So it was love. I came home, you know, we just getting back to the money. And as far as I wound up getting caught up again, catching little drug cases, and, you know, for me being on probation, I'm in and out. You know, uh, what's been doing this time, you know, you start to realize who, who. I mean, for, especially for my first bid, I realized the same nigga that I was ripping and running with. These niggas wasn't really who they said they was, you know? So it was just, I had I had to realize, man, I ain't really got so many homies. I ain't really got so many friends. Niggas not gonna move the same way that you gonna move. You can't expect niggas to. So, you know, so I had, I had so it was, just, it was like that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so now I want you to get to, like, the situation as uh, like how did you like how did the whole thing go down as far as you getting locked up and sitting for the time you've been now? You ain't gotta get too in detail, but as much as right. you can say, just speak on right. speak on that situation a little bit. Yeah. You know, with this situation, you know, it was it was it was it was a it was a rough situation, man, because at this time within like a week it was just a lot of stuff going on, man. Every day was something new happening. And niggas was just in a bag all over, you know. Tommy got killed. Tommy got killed when I got locked up. But, you know, Tommy was on the run. You know, the game was kind of falling apart, man. BSF, like, it was a lot of little kind of tension going in within the circle. So, you know, uh, you know, we, we wound up going out and everything. And just that little one instance, you know what I mean? Just one little nut ass situation. And that kind of just got me locked up. You know, niggas put me all at the scene, put my name all in it. Okay, okay, okay. And you, and what year was this that you actually got locked up? Was it 2010? It's 2010. You know, this happened. Yeah, man, allegedly this happened outside the Eagles bar. You know, homicide, attempted murder. You know, I, uh, I wound up getting 12 and a half for the attempted murder. I beat the homicide. You know, if I'm going to be loud, I beat the homicide. Streets, you can't win. I mean, 
Nobody's playing fair. Nobody's respecting the world. I want you to speak on your uh, your actual transition going in there, John. Initially, like when you first go for right. the streets and you first get in there, like what was that like for you? Well, you know, you know me in and out, you know what I mean. So it was, it was, you know, I've been in and out these streets, so I know how to move when I come through. And man, I got a lot of love through these streets. I put on for every ad, no matter where I go. But mentally, when I first came. It was all about trying to get back, trying to get back home. That was immensely. And, I mean, it was, I knew I had to get right also as far as with my religion. I mean, I'm Muslim, so I knew also I had to learn my religion because when I was out there, I wasn't learning anything. I mean, I'm Muslim, so I'm act Muslim. So, you know, that was one of the main part of my mental was getting, getting involved with my religion and sharing the law. It was just, it's just like, that's what I'm still working on to this day. And, I mean, I had to... You have one minute left. Yeah, the fuck the world mentality, but now it's like, it's, it's, it's a whole better type vision. Like, now I know my purpose. Now I know what I need to do. Now I know I need to help, 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 help the community besides breaking it down. I know I need to leave a, a different type of legacy than being, you know what I mean, a, 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 a gangster or this and that. You mean, I did it. I'm one of the ones that can say they did it still alive. So, you know, now it's time to do something positive. All right, so I want you to uh, elaborate a little bit more on your experience first going in, because I know you said you've been in and out, so you kind of already was prepared and knew what to expect doing the biz and stuff like that. But this last right. go round, going in not knowing, like, if you're going to be there for a long term, a long time, what was right. that experience like going in this time? Yeah, that was a heavy experience, because mind you, when I got locked up, I already had a drug case, so they sent me up state cold township. I had to go there for three years. So while I'm at cold township, I'm still fighting the drama. So while I'm there, you know, I'm not to get that. When I first get locked up, I'm talking to you, you know, damn, bro, how much time you got a nigga saying five years? I'm like, damn, five years just seemed like forever to me. You know what I mean? So, so, so my mindset was, like, I gotta get up out of this, you know, I gotta get back, I gotta stay out of the way. And then get in this library, and then I tried to do the library, but and that's a whole nother different language, man. So it's like, you ain't got folks out there, bro. Like, as far as when I got locked up, a lot of niggas that I expected to look out, niggas ain't look out. I mean, niggas, niggas wasn't loyal, so I had to really do a lot of stuff on my own. Folks helping me here and there, certain fellas helping me. So with that, you know, my mentality was like, you know, it's just basically me. I gotta get up out of this train. Nobody gonna fight for me the way I'm gonna fight for myself. You know what I mean? So going back and forth to court, you know, I wound up beating my homicide. You know I mean, uh, they offered me a deal for the attempt. First, they offered me an eight and a half to, uh, 20. And at this, at this time, when they offered that to me, I got about three, four years in. I'm sitting back like that. Five more years. I ain't really got that in me. I'm trying to get on now. And my, you know, now when I look back on it, I wish I would have took it, but then I don't. Because at that time, my mom state wasn't really ready this yet. This is a call from the Pennsylvania State, State Correctional Institution. For us, this call is subject to reporting and monitoring. And at the same, my mom said, my mom said wasn't ready for me to even get back on the streets. You know, I was still stuck in my juvenile ways. You know, still wanted to be, you know, still had that street mentality. So now, you know, as far as me getting that sentence, when he gave it to me, it was a blessing. And now I can get my mom right. Like, all right, all right, okay, okay. Now, if you could go back in time to the point where you really jumped out there, to the point where you were so deep in that you couldn't get out in time, if you could go back, what would you have done differently? Like, would you have left the streets alone altogether, or would you have got out at a certain time? Like, what could you change if you could change anything? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't think I would. I don't think I would change anything due to the fact that. I think I'm the best type of person that I am right now that I've ever been in my life. And everything that I've been through, is, it, it, it got me to this point to be able to be where I'm at mentally, spiritually, religiously, everything like that. So I think everything, you know, everything was written for me to be here. But if I could, and if I could take it back, definitely I would have stayed in school, man, because when I sit back and think about it, I, right now on this bed alone, I got eight years in. I fell when I was 19 years old. I'm 27 now. So just imagine if I took that opportunity to go to school for eight years. You know what I mean? 
could have been this a doctor, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution Forest. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. No. Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution Forest. 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 Pennsylvania State Correctional
I'm a Pepsi out. Far. Marionville, PA. Yeah, who think it's like one six two three nine something like that? They can Google all that. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm at, man. You know, show some love, man. Or they got the email. They can set the email up. We can correspond like that or whatever. Mm. All right, that's what it is, man. So on that note, man, till next time we signing out, man. Philly Fame TV. My God, BSF duty, man. Hold your head up, homeboy. Lord willing, everything work out for you, man. Keep running, man. Keep running, man. Everybody know, man. Our official goals, man. That's one thing for sure, man. Ever since I knew y'all, I've always been official. I've always been the same, man. Ain't never switched. Keep doing you, bro. Keep running, man. And hopefully, man, eight more years, man, I come home, we can do this interview again, you hear me? No, for sure, for sure, man. Lord willing, man, for sure. Oh. Oh. All right, man, All hold right, your head, bro. man. I'll get with you, man. All right, you too.